is bound to start a flame war, so I'll get it out to begin with. Android predates Apple's iOS by years. The early years of Android are shrouded in secrecy. The company was formed in 2003, dedicated to making a smarter interface. They began by working on cameras, but quickly moved over to phones. No official software was ever released while Android was in private hands, but they were working on it. At one point, they ran out of money, and a loan of $10,000 kept the project aloft, and it came with no strings attached. In July 2005, Google bought the company, with the obvious intent of going into mobile products. At the time, the only competition was WebOS, BlackBerry, Simeon, and Windows Mobile. Prototypes were already in distribution by late 2006, but the Android system of that time was very different from what we would think of today. It was more akin to BlackBerry, and had no touchscreen. The LG Prada was released in 2006 with its own OS and a touchscreen, so everyone changed their focus. Apple was working on their iOS since 2005, so both Google and Apple began competing with each other to defeat LG first. Apple unveiled its product in January 2007, and released the iPhone in June. Android was in open alpha testing, so iOS beat Android to market. The pressure was on Google now, so they released their OS for other companies to use in November that year. Along with this release came the Open Handset Alliance, which regulates how companies can develop for Android while keeping it an open source project. The following year, HTC released the Dream, which in the US was known as the G1. The G stood for Google. This was version 1.0 of Android, and it didn't have a name yet. These early versions of Android still had many of the familiar features of Android we use today. The notification shade, navigation buttons, customizable home screens, widgets, and an uncurated app store, originally called Android Market, now called Google Play. Not much changed until April of 2009 with the release of version 1.5. This began the tradition of calling each version by a confectionery name and it was called Cupcake. Along with it came support for more formats and the prominent placement of the now familiar search bar on the home screen. Android kept chugging along, putting out updates as need be. Since Android is open source, it quickly began to be adopted by numerous manufacturers. In 2009, some Android tablets began to be released, such as the Nook and the Acer Netbook, beating the iPad by a whole year but they were not really adopted by the public for years afterwards. It would be impossible to talk about all the different phone releases, but some notable ones were the Samsung Galaxy in June 2009 and the Moto Droid in October 2009. In January 2010, Google began to try to lead the different manufacturers with the Nexus program. They contracted an outside manufacturer to create a device that will spearhead the next version of Android, exemplifying Google's vision of how Android should be taken. The first Nexus device was aptly named the Nexus One, built by HTC. It came out with Android version 2.1 Eclair. A trend that was set by this Nexus was that it was very powerful and cheaper than most flagship devices which is a trend that recently was broken by the inordinately expensive Nexus 6. A few months later in June, I bought my first smartphone on its opening day, the HTC Evo 4G, which was the first 4G phone. And of course I promptly broke it within a year. Luckily a new Nexus was released in 2010, the Nexus S and the Nexus S 4G. I've used Nexus devices ever since. Each version of Android has brought little changes. But the biggest changes come with a full number update. Version 3.0 Honeycomb was built specifically for tablets and introduced the Holo interface. 2011 saw version 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich, the first being the Galaxy Nexus, my second Nexus. Version 5.0 came out in 2014 with a new look called Material Design. Google all the while was not satisfied with smartphones and tablets. They began to take Android in different directions. Many early attempts were failures. First they tried to bring Android to the TV in 2010 with Google TV, then the Nexus Q, and their final failure, Google Glass. Instead, Google has played catch up with other successful peripherals. 
Sony launched the first Android smartwatch in 2010, but Android wouldn't have a smartwatch version until 2014. They also released the highly successful Chromecast in 2013, and the new Android TV version the next year, which is gaining in popularity. There's a wide variety to Android out there, and it continues to diversify. This actually represents a problem. At Google's developer conference called Google I.O., they have mentioned what is called fragmentation for the last three years in their keynotes. It is hard to support new apps because they have to be made with a bunch of different Android versions in mind. This problem stems from manufacturers not updating their phones and people still using old technology. It's an inevitable problem when you have such a large open source platform. But there is a large community of developers who support these devices well beyond their expiration date. Hey, Cypher here. So that was the history of Android. There's a lot to this whole Android ecosystem, so I could only cover the most broad narrative. Be sure to subscribe and check out some previous episodes. I'll see you next time.